Hola, mis amigos. I'm Joanne on Joanne Tech Lover. And what have I got for you today? Today is the Corsair Vengeance Series K70 fully mechanical, fully LED backlit gaming keyboard. And this one features Cherry MX red switches, which are smooth and linear, so you get a much faster typing experience for the double and triple tap. It'll register every keystroke. So depending on your preference, it could be good or bad, right? Uh, but anyway, I prefer the more distinctive clickety sound of the Cherry MX Blues, but we'll go into that when I talk about a MX Blue keyboard. So a little bit about the K70. It's the successor to the K60 keyboard, um, only that, like I mentioned before, fully mechanical, fully backlit keys. Um, also, you get a full key rollover. That means any number of keys press at the same time and you won't experience key conflicts which is great for those of you who have complex uh, commands that you use um, and also one more thing is that the k70 has per key adjustable backlighting and that is probably my favorite feature on this keyboard and we're going to get into that once i plug this baby in Alrighty, so here's everything that comes in the box. First up is the keyboard, which I will go into a little bit more detail once I plug it in and show you the LEDs. But first, about how it looks. I like that it comes in this metal frame. This is a black brushed anodized aluminum. This also comes in the silver brushed aluminum version, but I actually don't like that because I prefer the black coating and that it's more stealth mode and it's just better for gaming in my opinion, just looking at it. Um, but it also comes with Cherry MX Blue switches and Cherry MX uh, Browns. However, in the future, if you would like to see the differences between the switches, I may do a video for the comparisons. So I look forward to that. Also, moving right along, what do we have here? We have this kind of like smooth, rubberized, uh, uh, this is a wrist rest, and you get these two hooks back here. It's actually really easy to install. Installing this is actually really easy, so let me go ahead and just show you right now. Just line up the hooks with the mounts right here and simply press in. Ha! That was simple, wasn't it? And uh, since we're on the bottom of the keyboard, I do want to go over some of its feet. So there are two kinds, the rubberized type, that one you leave your keyboard on the table and you're in a very intensive gameplay, it won't shift around. But I guess the table shifted around, but that's another story. <laughs> uh, and you also get a different type of feet to angle your keyboard if you like, prefer that type of comfort. We're gonna go ahead and set this down so you can get an idea of set angle. Hope that installation was quick and painless, so we're gonna go ahead and move right along to the rest of the accessories. Alrighty, so you get this rather thick uh, braided cable. This is cloth braided, looks pretty sturdy to me, I'd say. And two USB 2.0 connectors. Now why do you need two? Well, sometimes you just need more juice to power a powerful keyboard, but since it doesn't have software for macro setup, anything too complex, it's really for the USB pass-through here on the back. So let's say you don't want to plug in a mouse or a headset to the back of your computer, but then you ran out of ports in the front too. Well, it's kind of easy to just reach around to the back of the keyboard and plug that in, right? So here's a closer look at the four-way bio switch. And what this does is it allows you to switch the polling rate from 1000 hertz to 500, 250 to 125 hertz, which could be useful for compatibility with uh, different BIOS versions. And there's also even a mode to switch it back to basic BIOS. So most of us probably won't need to touch it, but I do believe it is a useful feature that they have included. On to the rest of the accessories, such as the documentation. Get a two year warranty, awesome as well as this quick start guide. I always try to look through it just in case. You never know about the functions, but the best way is really what? Test it out, folks, but I'll be doing that for you. Now, as for the keys, you get an extra set of keys. These were the original WASD keys. And I took them off because I wanted the textured look on the keyboard, just for my move, WASD. Um, however, they've also included a set of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you'll notice that not only is it kind of red, dark red in color, but it's got this triangular texture to it. And if you'll notice, these specific keys, the WASD, slope towards each other so you know that you are definitely on those keys and it's very important, especially when you're stressed out in battle and suddenly you're like, why am I not moving forward? But I generally don't have that problem. It's more like I forgot all of my other macro buttons on my mouse and I just press all the buttons. 
<laughs> um, but uh, one more thing they've included for you is this keycap removal tool. I really like these. They don't come with every keyboard and it allows you to clean your keyboard better as well as see your Cherry MX switches. I mean, why not, right? I want to see them. So let's take off the E. Simply just press it in and bring it out. You'll notice that very bright red Cherry MX red switch and the LED above it. So each key has that. And let me go ahead and plug this in so you can get a better view of this. So a little bit about why I didn't replace the one through six keys. Well, you'll notice that it, there's only a number on here. You don't get the symbols that you get on here, so I can't remember this off the top of my head. Well, I could, but I'd really have to like put a lot of thought into it. Um, and so for an improvement, I believe Corsair could add the symbols as well. So I can go ahead and swap these out for these keys too. But I normally use, um, I just use my G600 for the uh, macros and stuff, so I don't actually need the keyboard, but sometimes it might be kind of useful depending on the game that I play. Now onto the actual keyboard. I have it plugged in, but the LEDs are not on, so I can show you the features once they are on. So this is a standard QWERTY layout. You do get a full number pad, which I really like because I do crunch a lot of numbers sometimes. I like to, you know, keep my receipts organized and all that. Um, and next to that, you get a home end and all these page up, page down keys. I think these are pretty useful um, as I do use home and end in editing quite a bit. And uh, one more thing is that I've noticed on the TK series, which is a uh, Cooler Master, by the way, they have the number pad, but it's like a smaller keyboard, only these set of functions. Um, they are used with the function key or something like the sort. And I will go over the TK keyboard in the future, so look forward to that. Um, now on to the rest of the K70 features, you'll notice that the space bar also comes textured. Now that's a freebie. And on to the right side here, you'll notice that you have multimedia buttons. So for play, pause, fast forward, and all that good stuff. And I find that it's, um, you can definitely use it in window, Windows Media Player. However, if I try to play, pause a movie in Amazon um, or in Netflix, I've noticed that like it just doesn't work. It'd be really cool one day if they could do it for web-based programs too. Um, and now above that, you get a really cool metal um, roller for your volume control. And next to that, volume like mute and unmute. It's like really awesome to have it up at the top, easy to see, easy to access. And some indicators as well as this uh, Windows lock button. I do like this because once I'm in game, I don't want to accidentally hit Windows. Then I'm like, oh my god, I just got kicked out or just got minimized. Um, and then next to that is the LED button. So there are four modes. Let me go ahead and first light up the entire keyboard so you can see it better and toggle through the modes. So here's the LED button. So you have off, light. By the way, I prefer this level of lighting so it's not blinding, by the way, because I'm sitting right in front of it. And then there's like the second mode and then brightest mode. It's like I need to put on a pair of sunglasses or something. But that's good news, right? That means it's really powerful. So let me go ahead and turn it back to off. And then there's the mode where uh, it's just your individual keys that are lit. There it is. You'll notice that I have C and V, because sometimes when you have a cluster of LEDs, they don't have all the keys that you need for a game. But um, I set this up for Titanfall, so I can get to my melee, uh, my Titan keys, and you know my run, and all that stuff. So it's all individual, which is really useful for me personally. And now let's show you how to uh, set it individually. Alrighty, so let's just hold down this button right here. And it should start flashing, see that? Once it does, just go ahead and click any keys that you want. Press and hold again so that it sets. See? Now you're in this mode, back in full mode, and back in individually backlit mode. Now, let's say I want to change it back. Same deal, just so you know you can change it back. And unfortunately, this uh, keyboard is not capable of holding more than one of these uh, uh, memories for the layout. So you're just going to have to switch it up when you need to, but I think in this little clump here should have all of the keys that you will need. So I suppose all that's left is a uh, sound test of the keys, right? Uh, one more thing before I get into that is that uh, they are 45 gram actuation, so it's two millimeters to actuate and four millimeters to bottom out. I like to bottom out because I mean, that's why I like the blue so much. But um, here, let me just show you before they bottom out what it sounds like. 
I think that's it, yeah. But then now let's go into full typing force. Is that enough? <laughs> Hopefully that was enough for you to see or hear what the Cherry MX Red sound like. Once I do the blues, you're gonna hear a completely different sound. But that's another video for another time and you can be sure I will bring that to you. This keyboard, I did mention that I wanted to try the red switches, but it was also born out of desperation because my Cherry MX Blue keyboard after two years just failed on me. But I suppose it does happen, right? Especially after eating on it and stuff. Uh, near it, I mean. Um, <laughs> but what I wanted to say was that that, uh, I got this keyboard and remember this is from blues to red so it was a drastic change for me but like all changes you do adapt to it even for rubber domes so honestly I am pretty unbiased about it all like if I didn't have the money to like uh, buy a new keyboard I would probably just use whatever was available but if I could it would definitely be MX blues so what happened was when I switched from blues to reds um, I uh, I type really fast. So I felt my fingers sinking into the keys as if it's like your leg is sinking into a bog or something. And I was like, did it register? <laughs> so that, that was experience that I went through. But definitely over the last month since I've been using this keyboard, I've gotten really used to it. And I really, really do like it. It, it allows for even faster typing than uh, when I had the other ones. Um, but I think I will probably switch back to blues as this version does also come with Cherry MX Blues. So pros and cons. Pros is that uh, it comes with a great layout. You get the home and keys, you get the full number keypad, which I really like. And uh, I really like the textured keys. It's basically like just an extra set of keys in case those um, you know happen to break or who knows what horrible things might befall them. Um, but also I really like this volume wheel. It's really awesome to be honest. I just like to play with it all day long. Um, and also, like I said, in love with the per key illumination. I really don't know any other keyboard that does that. Um, but if you're looking for like macro setups and stuff, that's where the cons come in is that um, uh, I wish you could set specific macros to the keys, but then that would require software. And um, on Amazon that I've noticed and some other websites, it's actually wrong. Corsair states, or on the website, that uh, you can do key bindings and macros and all that, but you actually can't. So I'm just here to dispel that. Um, and what else? I would like it that the texture keys for the numbers um, maybe include more, I don't know, more or less, and also include the symbols, please. That would be very, very helpful. What else do I like about it? Um, honestly, uh, I, I just, I'm just really happy with this. I've been using it for a little while and I absolutely love it. And the palm rest. As wonderful as it feels, um, it's still at too much of an angle for me personally. I'm still sticking to my like thick padded like faux leather or leatherette um, uh, wrist rest. And um, this is nice, like I said, but a little bit at an angle for my taste. Um, and I believe not too many cons to be perfectly honest. I also really love the metal finish of this. This brushed black aluminum. I loved it. And to be perfectly honest, I was kind of avoiding the Corsair series in the beginning because I thought it was only in like brushed silver aluminum. It's just like agonizing nails on chalkboard feeling to me. I don't, I don't know why. I mean, it's me. I'm weird, but you know, that's how it is. But that's it for the pros and cons. Well, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing slash review of the Corsair K70 mechanical gaming keyboard, Red Cherry MX Switches. I'm sure I've completely loaded your mind with that Cherry MX Red, Cherry MX Red. <laughs> but um, like I said, I uh, hope you really liked it. Um, and if you did, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, uh, comment and like, uh, all if you found it interesting and you want to see more tech unboxings, all that good stuff. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Joanne Food Lover, on my Facebook fan page which is Joanne Tech Lover and uh, what is that twitch.tv slash worldtune where I stream four days a week with my co-host Tim awesome guy by the way um, and we play lots of games so far we have World of Warcraft um, Titanfall and we just added Dota 2 to the collection and he wants me to get Dead Space but that sounds very scary to me I don't like scary games but it might be really funny <laughs> well anyway uh, I guess all that's left to say is adios